homogeneous spaces. There's a number of them, I call it. And there are maps, there are algebraic maps, there are rational maps going down. And these maps are height increasing. Okay, they are quadratic maps, so the height doubles because it's logarithmic. Okay, so the, the, the maps are about quadratic, the equations are quadratic, so the height of the x coordinate about doubles when you go from here to here, but that's good news because going from here to here, it halves. Okay? So you can do this, in fact, as many times as you want. Once you are here, you don't find the points here, you can do a descent and find uh, the, the people who do the descent, the, 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 the descent children. Okay, so this is, this is the, uh, the father or the mother, and these are the children, and then there are more children here, more children here, more children here, and so on. Okay. Um, the problem is that I think in magma you can do two layers, but nobody knows how to program farther layers of the algorithm. Can the equations just get too, um, too difficult to write down? Um, Okay, so these are called uh, homogeneous spaces, and there are maps going down, but how do I know that the points are going to be there? It turns out that if you have, if you have a point in here, it always belongs to one of these. I don't know which one a priori. Well, actually, if I know the point, then I can tell you we'll, we'll have a map back and it's going to show up in there. So once I have a complete list of the homogeneous spaces, I can look through all of them, find points, send them back, send them down, and if I'm somehow able to cross out, by whatever means, all of them, either finding points or proving there are no other points, then I know I found all of them. Okay, well that's the idea of the descent. Um, as I said, there are several flavors of this sense. The very most basic one is called a full, uh, a full two descent. And I'm going to do a poor job at describing it here. It's explained in more detail in the in chapter two of the notes, and um, and uh, there are actually some proofs in that chapter. So. Full to descent means that I'm going to do it for elliptic curves that have a full two torsion defined over Q. Okay? So these EIs are going to be integers and distinct. Okay? So how are we going to find points? Well, take, take one point. Suppose there is a point, <coughs> then what has to happen, this is just a very uh, a naive explanation of what has to happen. Well, what has to happen is that um, these three multiply to be a square. So there may be, uh, there's going to be, uh, this number itself is going to be some number times a square. So the square part of this number is going to go into here, that's good. What I'm worried is about the square free part of this number, the square free part and the square free part, those three square free parts have to multiply to a square. Okay? So let's let's see where that goes. So this should be uh, the square free part times a square. And uh, what I need is that the, all three multiply to be a square. Okay. If that's the case, uh, let's multiply this equation both sides by delta 1, delta 2. I want to eliminate one of the deltas. So if I multiply both sides by delta 1, delta 2, I get a square there. That's good. And a square times delta 1, delta 2. So what that says is that modulus squares, delta 3 is just delta 1 times delta 2. 
or in other words, if delta 3 is delta 1, delta 2 times the square divided by delta 1, delta 2 square, this is a square which can be thrown in into W. This is a rational number, this is a square, so it can be put in W, right? So I'm going to actually substitute delta 3 by delta 1, delta 2, and it's all the same. So, so now I have D, that equation, x0 minus 1 is delta 1 u squared, x0 minus e2 is delta 2 v squared, and x0 e3 is delta 1 delta 2 w squared. Okay. And, um, if you subtract equations, now I want to get rid of the x naught here. What this brings me is to what I'm going to call C of delta 1, delta 2, and it's E3 minus D1 is delta 1 of, I'm going to replace now, this is a variable. That's what I want to find. For each delta 1 and delta 2, I have one of these spaces. But if I, if I started with a point x0, y0, if I start with an actual rational point, I can carry this through and find for you what is delta 1 and delta 2, and that will actually give me a point in here. Okay. So EQ actually maps to C delta 1, delta 2, uh, for some delta 1, delta 2, uh, or rather, a point. Uh, but we know, we know what, the, what the map is. X0, Y0, maps to um, X0 minus E1, comma, X0 minus E2, modulo, the square. Okay? Or, or rather to not to that space, but to sort of like the spaces of delta 1, delta 2. Like in what delta 1, delta 2 I'm going to find my point is given by that map. Okay? Alright, so how do we use that in our favor? Uh, oh, can we, can, and, and, but maybe I lost too much information here. I subtracted, I did some uh, algebraic mumbo jumbo, and maybe I lost uh, my point here. Can I go back? If I find a point here, can I go back and find a point on the elliptic curve? It turns out I didn't lose any information, and there's a map also from any delta 1, delta 2, from any of those spaces, I can go back. If I have one of these points, it maps to the point A1 plus delta 1 x0 squared, comma, delta 1, delta 2, x0, y0, z0. You can check if that works. Okay. Very good. So, yeah. Since these are two functions are rational, can I use it around them like move it to zero and You can, are you saying that I can always choose E1 to be 0? Yeah, since you are rational, right? You can compare with the algorithm P1 and P2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's, um, but that's, that's, that not, that not, doesn't work over Q. No, it doesn't, that, that automorphism? Yeah. You, you can't do that for any elliptic over Q and get a lambda that is in Q. Yeah. What about two torsion points over Q? The two torsion points are over Q, but when you do that transformation, the lambda doesn't need to be over Q. It's a, a good idea, but it doesn't quite work. You, you have to go to an extension 
And that's something that is used many times. That's called a Legendre form of the elliptic curve. And, and you can do that uh, to do other things, but you have to keep track of what extension you went to when you did that change. Okay. So, so we have a map. Uh, it turns out this also forgets about two uh, multiples so by two of a point. It turns out this forgets about those two. So it's a map, yes. Uh, this? Mod, mod, modulo squared. It's meaning that if x naught minus 1 is uh, uh, 18, that's what, 2 times 9, so I keep a 2. And my delta 1 is 2. So, uh, so it turns out that the map works best. There is some kernel in the map. And the map is things that are twice a point, which is fine by me. I want the generators to survive, and the generators will survive the map. The problem is that two torsion points survive in this portion. So they will be mapped also. They will be also, we'll have to find where they are and, and make sure we don't confuse them with generators of the, of the rank. But there's a map to, um, I'm going to call it delta, to some gamma delta. What's, uh, what's the image? So gamma delta is the space of uh, delta 1, delta 2s. OK? Where these deltas are integers non-zero integers uh, that are square free and uh, there are a lot of numbers that are square free in the integers, let's take any prime, that's one of them. Uh, so I want to restrict that and it turns out you can restrict that. The number that appear there, this is some corollary that is also explained in chapter two how this comes about, but uh, the numbers that appear are <coughs> If P divides delta I, <coughs> then P divides the discriminant of E, which in this case is just is the, the triple product of all the differences. Okay, uh, that's, that the map is uh, defined like in here that map, and uh, this map is injective, and uh, it is a homomorphism. So it is a homomorphism, that means that, uh, well, what is the group structure here? You can multiply two numbers and then remove squares, and that will bring you back to the, to the set. So you can all multiply pairs and see where they go. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure I'm going to have time today to do uh, one example of the descent we'll do tomorrow. Um, but in particular, If you've had abstract algebra, you know these consequences, but it's just uh, it's good to point out what's happening. Uh, so what I want is, I don't know this, and I want to find generators of this. So I want to go here and see what is in here. I can calculate this now, and it is finite now, because there's only finite many prime divided into this discriminant. It's a finite uh, group. I want to know what comes from here. So what I can say is, for instance, since it's a homomorphism, uh, if a pair delta 1, delta 2, and a pair delta 1 prime, delta 2 prime are in the image, then their product is also in the image. Okay? So there's a lot of restrictions. Um, and, and all the possibilities. So if 
uh, delta 1, delta 2 is in, uh, in the image, uh, but uh, delta 1 prime, delta 2 prime is not in the image, then the product is not in the image. Okay, um, so I will exploit that, that uh, as soon as we find something that is in the image, if we find another thing that is in the image, you can do all the products and find other things that are in the image. Once you find something that is not in the image, you can also find other things that are not in the image. And what this means is, um, so in terms of spaces, it means that if you have a, a point here and it goes here, you have another point and it goes to another of those spaces, it means that if one of these spaces has a point and another one has a point, when you multiply those deltas, that gives you another space that also has automatically another rational point that will give you a point uh, down, which is not actually interesting as a point for us because it's the sum in the elliptic curve would be a point that is the sum of the two you have already found. Okay. But it gives you a way to narrow down um, what's possible. And so let me just set up one example. Yeah. Uh, so the so the what I'm saying is uh, what delta I for for I one or two. So, so what delta ones can happen are restricted by these conditions, and what delta twos can happen are restricted by the two. So it is really if you define these numbers. This is the product space of two identical sets, right? So, so what happens is that if you have um, E to be y squared equals x cubed minus x. Look, I'm going to write it too high. Then this is x times x minus 1 times x plus 1. And I can take E1 to be 0, E2 to be 1, E2, uh, E3 to be minus 1. Uh, the delta, the product, like this product, is minus 1 times 2 times 1 is minus 2. And the possible, the possible pairs are uh, the, uh, the, the possibilities are, well, it can be uh, plus or minus 1 or plus or minus 2. That's it. Okay? So there are 4 times 4, there are 16 possibilities. So this thing has uh, 16 elements. What we're going to do next time is check all of them, all of the possible spaces. If there are rational points on the elliptic curve, they are in one of those 16 spaces. So we're just going to make a map of all the spaces and check which ones have points, which ones don't. We'll find that only the torsion points are being uh, they show in the spaces, there are no other, so the rank is zero. There are a couple of examples like that in the notes uh, with uh, more exciting units, rank, uh, rank two or so. So uh, we'll do that next time. And, uh,